I pledge to be a president who seeks not to divide, but unify. He was very affable, well-dressed, and, and good-looking. The girls liked him. <laughs> Joe was taught how to be a lifeguard by a black and a fool in the city. They weren't doing that kind of stuff. pick Joe up in the morning in Wilmington and go to Washington, D.C. Over two million miles traveled on this line. We always had time to talk uh, to, you know, the conductor on the train. Commuting so often, his home station was renamed to honor him. For 36 years in the Senate, eight as vice president, Joe Biden rode the train thousands of times. He would come here every morning to make the three-hour trip that would let him put in a full day's work in the nation's capital and still make it home on time to kiss his kids goodnight. Well, Joe, I've known Joe a long time. I'm about 35 years working on the train as a train conductor. and. Uh, Joe, when I first met him back in the 1980s, uh, nice guy, personable guy, uh, and we were able to talk. I could sit down and we could discuss, uh, you know, what was going on in our children's lives and where we could talk about current events. At that time in our history, uh, people were a little bit more civil than they are today when it comes to politics. So you said personally, Joe Biden's a good guy, you'd call him a friend. What about professionally? I know Joe. I've never voted for Joe for U.S. Senator, uh, Vice President, or certainly not for President. Are politics different, differ? I see the world uh, really completely different than he does. Uh, but a nice guy, yes. America has a new president, and they call him Amtrak Joe. Most American senators are based in D.C., but Biden's constant commuting was born out of tragedy. A horrible, horrible car accident. In 1972, as 30 year old Joe was set to become one of the youngest senators in history, his wife Nelia and his baby daughter Naomi were killed. The car crash, just before Christmas, left his toddler sons, Bo and Hunter, hospitalized for weeks. Biden reluctantly decided to keep the Senate post, taking his oath of office at Bo's hospital bedside. As the story goes, uh, he made the decision that he would try it for six months, and if it didn't work out, he was going to resign. And uh, by the grace of God, the Biden family came through. Fred Sears is one of Biden's oldest friends. They were together when Joe first met Nelia on spring break. A star athlete in high school, Biden played on his college football team freshman year and was already president of his class. The two of you went to school here at the University of Delaware, and he lived in this dorm. Yes, and uh, not much to look at. It looks just like it did back then in 1960, 61, 62, but uh, Joe lived in the dorm all four years. So what was Joe Biden like on campus? What was his reputation? Uh, he was very affable, well-dressed, and, and good-looking. The girls liked him. <laughs> so. And he was not known for his academics, was he? No, I would say not. Uh, but, uh, you know, nothing uh, at the end of the world. Uh, I remember when we were coming back from the spring break trip we took, and he said, uh, I'm going to Syracuse Law School. I said, I looked at him, I said, Joe, you know, first objective is to get out of the UAD. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't exactly going to be a slam dunk, but uh, we made it without a problem. He met his current wife, uh, Dr. Jill Biden, who was also a student here at University of Delaware. What kind of effect has Jill Biden had on Joe in his life? Uh, I don't know where he'd be without Jill right now, really. She brought things together. She came in as a, as a, as a new mom for, for uh, uh, the boys uh, at a time when, uh, you know, I'm not sure they needed, they needed a mom badly, and I'm not sure a lot of women could have handled that, to tell you the truth. And they are a team, really. 
Joe Biden also tragically lost his son, his oldest son, Beau Biden, five years ago. Beau was a rising political star. You also attended the funeral along with then-President Barack Obama, who gave a eulogy. What was it like for Joe Biden during that time? Going to the funeral was just just amazing. Joe must have stood in, stood for 10, 10, 11 hours greeting people. They were all crying and falling in his he was He was taking care of them. He was consoling them more than they were consoling him. The whole city poured out for its native son, who first moved to Delaware when he was 10. Wilmington is a majority black city today. Racial tensions were high there when Joe was in school, stoked by white flight to the suburbs and lingering bad feeling from the building of the highway that still divides the city today. Biden got his first taste of America's racial divide at 19, working as the only white lifeguard at this city pool. Maurice Pritchett taught Biden the ropes. This was all black neighborhood. I used to laugh, uh, you know, a lot of kids run around and then you had to blow the whistle and it was like he, they'd look at him like, me, you talking to me? You, you got the guts to talk to me, yes. Stop running. Do you think he's the right man now to heal racial divisions in the states? I think so. People come in and they judge you. So he's had to prove himself. And he did it here as a young man in college. Uh, he has done that really basically going into the political arena because he still had to deal with the city people. Education activist B.B. Coker first met Joe 50 years ago at a protest in Wilmington. Never carried his own posters. Why? He just didn't make signs, but he grabbed somebody else's. Do you really think when he started in the civil rights movement, was he really involved in the cause or was a little bit of political motivation nah, behind it? he was there. Uh, it wasn't that popular for whites to be in the civil rights movement at the time that Joe started. So rest assured, it wasn't political. Uh, you could get the black vote in another way, but uh, Joe saw that what we were doing was not show and tell. It was about uh, open housing, public accommodations, and it was for the economic viability of the area. He didn't care whether you took his picture or not. In fact, I can't even remember seeing him get in a picture when we were walking. We were protesting, we were doing stuff, but it was for legitimate reasons. Despite his long history of activism, Biden's also been criticized as well. His 1994 crime bill boosted a prison system that had five times more blacks in jail than whites. And that's not all. Back in the 70s, busing, busing was such a hot, such a hot oh, button yeah. issue. Yeah. Um, Joe, Joe Biden rejected busing at the time. That's this right. was something that Kamala Harris, the woman who he ended up picking as his VP, yeah. scolded him for during a debate. Mm -hmm. Was he wrong to have rejected busing back then? When Joe was in our young adults of the NAACP group. Our position was that if we open housing, kids would be able to go to school wherever they lived. All busing did and all busing does is desegregate a school building. That's not education, that's a building. Think about saying to your child, if your child looked like my child, that the only way you're gonna get a good education and learn is to sit by a white child. How racist is that? And while Biden's history on racial issues is murky, it was America's first black president who chose him to be his VP. Where true faith and allegiance... Barack Obama initially picked Biden to counter his youth and lack of experience, both in Washington and in foreign policy. But what started as a strategic move to win white working class votes quickly turned into a bromance. This is a relationship that started as a political rivalry but became a, a political friendship and then became a personal friendship that allowed the two to speak to each other very frankly and to accomplish things together, which is quite unusual in our system of government. Uh, I've had the pleasure of working for six presidents and six vice presidents, and I have never seen this kind of relationship before. When Joe Biden was vice president, he was in charge of a lot of international dossiers, Ukraine, Iraq, Central America. As senator, he was chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. What are going to be his biggest challenges in this first term? Well, first, he has to rebuild a, an American presence internationally, especially in international institutions, and especially in terms of dealing with COVID. This means re-entering the World Health Organization, 
But on top of the pandemic, uh, he has a new world to confront because the world of today is different than the world he left when at the end of the Obama administration. The U.S., obviously mm. one of the country's worst hit by the pandemic. Is foreign policy even going to be a priority for Joe Biden? Uh, it will be. But he has to link <clears throat> um, foreign policy with domestic policy. And he has to underscore why um, Americans need to understand the importance of American leadership in the world and American engagement and participation. Whether it is at home or abroad, there's one area in which Joe Biden seems to be much stronger than his predecessor, and, and that is in regards to empathy, um, something that you yourself saw personally when you were ambassador to Brazil. Can you share that story with me? Certainly. Uh, Vice Pre then Vice President Biden traveled to Brazil in late May of 2013. He noticed that I was wearing a blue star on my lapel, which indicated that I had a loved one deployed in a combat theater. And when he saw that, he poked me in the lapel and said, you're a blue star dad. He said, I was a blue star dad. But what was especially striking was at the end of the trip, uh, he stopped in mid-step and turned around and came back to me, reached into his uh, pocket, pulled out his wallet, and removed from it a rosary, a finger rosary and said, here, I want to give this to you. This got my son Bo out of Iraq. I hope it gets your son out of Afghanistan. A man known for his kindness, but also his contradictions. The first Catholic president since Kennedy, Biden also backs abortion. The champion of the landmark Violence Against Women Act, who faced allegations of sexual assault. A great dad with a controversial son linked to a corruption scandal. And his biggest challenge is still yet to come. It's a really sick moment for everyone to, to watch the assault on the Capitol building. This is, this is a horrible period for our country. Byron Dorgan is a former senator from North Dakota who worked alongside Biden for 14 years. Do you think Joe Biden is truly capable of bringing America back together? You know, in some ways, I think he's probably exactly the right person to do this because he's, uh, he's up in age. He has a great deal of experience having served in government. He, he's someone who has a bipartisan reputation. And I think ultimately, uh, Senator McConnell, who has been running the Senate now for some years in a way that gives me some, some problem, uh, I, I hope that Senator McConnell understands that uh, here's someone that he can work with. How would he go about it concretely? That famous Delaware way, just keep talking? <laughs> he talked a lot. I mean, Joe, Joe is a talker. In fact, his desk in the Senate was right behind, in the row behind my desk, right behind mine. And so I had a lot of Joe in my ear over the years. Break it down. Both sides would do well to remember the dignity of the House. Remember the, the unbelievable fights we had uh, in, in the Affordable Care Act, so-called Obamacare. And, you know, that passed by one vote. And uh, Joe Biden spent a lot of time on Capitol Hill with all of us. This is after he left to go to work for as vice president. But then he came back and, uh, you know, he, he, he worked and worked and worked to find ways for us to thread the needle to get the Affordable Care Act passed. And he was, he, he was tough. He was gentle. He would get a, a group in a, in a private room someplace and push. And then he'd get some other people in there and cajole and persuade. And There are so many hot button issues at the moment in the United States. The pandemic, the economy, how divided the United States is. Many critics say that they don't think Joe Biden is up to the challenge, that he is perhaps too frail, not aggressive enough, possibly going senile. What are your thoughts about those criticisms? That is so far from the truth. Uh, Joe Biden, you know, is up in age, but he knows the issues. Uh, he's going to take on COVID. He, he's he's going to immediately begin working on things. He'll uh, rejoin the Paris Accords on the climate. Uh, he will deal with uh, low carbon energy issues, I think. He will probably want to create an infrastructure bill for the country very quickly. So, you know, Joe has a lot of energy. He's very smart, very capable. And this, you know, this things that you just mentioned about Joe's capabilities, that's, that's the stuff that's paraded around by Trump and his minions, but it's not true at all.
Biden heads into his first term with just a slight majority in Congress and a deeply divided nation. Only time will tell if the aftermath of the tragic events that culminated here with the storming of the U.S. Capitol will help the new president bring the two sides closer together.